just possibly. Way, it's working, and it's got a thingy on it, and um, I've no idea. Have I got sound? Yes. Have I got sound coming out in the right places? I don't know. It's the standard road crash. Let's have a listen on here. Because I've no idea what's occurring now. Let's see. Uh, da 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 bum bum bum. Because it's come on totally different this week to any other week. Am I there? Maybe I ought to go and have a look. So bear with. If you're if you're here already, then great. And if you're not, then uh, I'll be with you soon. <laughs> Maybe. Let's have a look. Click on there. Click on there. And it's doing it totally different to what it's done ever before. And no, I don't appear to be there. Which is a shame. Is there any other way of being live? Don't know. So why isn't that working? If anybody's on there, then you know we can. Since I'm live streaming, it's got end stream as being an option, but uh, it doesn't say that it's doing it. One thirty-eight, one thirty-nine, one forty. So why is why am I not on there? Oh, no, that's last week. Is there some other way of doing it? Apparently, I am live, but I couldn't see me on my own screen. That makes very little sense. Right. Anyway, if that's these car crashes are getting slightly different. <laughs> what can you say? What can you do? What can you be? I don't know. You can be an idiot like me, I suppose. L life is for living, not for taking too seriously. And if anybody's out there, then please say hello, if you'd like. Uh, have I got the... Oh, I've got the right thumbnail up. Yeah, OK. I shall cl click on there and say hello. Hello. Or that's the multitude. That's um, two. One of which is me. Right, let's see if that actually works on the. Oh, now because I've started this differently, it says apparently I've got an excellent connection, and it always showing me, showing me graphs and things. I don't know what I'm looking at, but um, yeah, I think that's a, that's how many chat messages and things. Well, there's something different. Today, the car crash went better than normal. Brackets for me at least. Boom, there we go. So that bit's working and that bit's working and I'm, I'm so I'm a happy bunny. I'm gonna have a drink. Skull. And if anybody who's who worries about these sort of things is watching, that's Diet Coke. My favourite tipple. Which is true actually. It is my favourite tipple. Right, ho. Well, it's twenty hundred hours on no, it's twenty one hundred twenty hundred hours and one now. On the nineteenth of the fourth, twenty twenty three, and this is London calling. Well, almost London calling. This is Buckinghamshire calling the world. How you doing, world? And um, just thought I'd come on and do my normal thing. And if there isn't anybody around, then fine. If there is, then you know, if you're catching me on the replay, that's great. If you if you come in live, that's even better. But what the hell? I'm here, and I did say I'd just read a book if necessary, but I haven't got one. <laughs> no. 
Right, okay, I shall do my normal thing then. Looks slightly uh, strange. Trying to remember to look at the light. I've seen the light. But uh, see if I can tip the glasses slightly so you get to see the eyes. That's better. Now, which of my... So, that's live. As in, that's the studio. That's live, as in that's what's going out. And that's the... And that's the thing of me. For the thing of me, I mean. Right, okay, so... There's a hell of a delay on this. Hmm. Anyway, never mind. Right. Ah, Stephen. <laughs> I see you're here. Car crash, yes. Um, my lives, my lives, I've referred to as a car crash for the simple reason that, you know, when you're, you're stood at the side of the road and you see it's going to be a disaster and there's nothing you can do about it, but it turns into a disaster anyway and all you can do is try and help out when clear up the mess it's that sort of thing my uh, it's a it's a common expression where I come from um, yeah the technology involved in this is all a bit strange I've been reading things I mean I was watching something the other day and it was about using OBS that's the studio software to use it to copy in um, VHS tapes, really good, and it, it taught me a lot. But I have tried reading the help files on here just for doing this sort of thing, and basically, it's confusing. And when you you then read something, uh, you, you read it on there, and you think, right, okay. So if I do that and that and that, that will happen. And then you try it, and it doesn't work, and uh, you end up looking like a nana, which is not unusual for me to look like a nana. But you know. Uh, you look like a nana and it all goes wrong. So I work on the principle that, you know, there's a, there's a clue in the title of the channel. Uh, keep it simple. If it's going to go wrong, expect it to go wrong and just try and put it right, rather than fr fretting over it. I mean, I'm talking to you now. I've had thousands of views on my channel. I've had, I've got uh, four people on here at the moment, one of which is me. I think it says four. And, um, you know, I could, I could have a thousand, I could have a million, I could have two, I could have just me. It's, it's all the same thing, really. But, you know, I don't worry about it because there's nothing I can do about it. I can only do my best. And if my best isn't good enough, then that's fine. Then, you know, somebody else can go and do something better. But what I will try and do is I'll always be honest. And to be honest, my, my lives, oh, I've got an upgrade. To be honest, my lives um, are, you know, they're normally okay. But they always start a bit different because this OBS software always starts slightly different. Today, I've actually got the dashboard up. In fact, uh, I'll see if I can show you. I don't know whether it will work. Um, if I do that, turn that off. Right, if I switch to there, boom, you can see... Oh, hopefully you can see, you can see me, and that's a while ago, apparently. But um, yeah, so there's me, and there's the dashboard. I've never had this thing work before because it all depends how you couple into YouTube as to whether it comes up or not. And I've never ever had the comments down there where I can actually see them. What I've normally had to do is this, which is watch the same thing that you're watching, which is. The normal oh it's not so far behind uh, which is the normal um, live feed but that doesn't very often work anyway that's me now here and that's it working now the delay I've got on there is enormous I think because I haven't got the bit I just saw on my own, own stuff you're seeing it before I am which is even more confusing <laughs> oh what the hell yeah anyway I'll cut back to me now so that um, I can get my enormously handsome good looks on their film star looks if only there we go right um had a quick scratch of my ear on uh what should we talk about this week i've put up a video today which is quite interesting i think i've asked for help genuinely because i've got a sir crosley it's um, 
is from 2011 and Crosley aren't that popular over in the UK but uh, they've been around but you know um, apart from the odd record player you don't see a great deal you see most of the other brands that are exactly the same thing to look at by the by the look of it I don't know but uh, this any anyway this thing is no longer made it's got oh yeah I've, I've seen my screen now doing other things um yeah this thing it's got uh SD card, USB input, it's got a tape on the side, it looks like a, the old, a very cheap car mechanism, and it's got a CD on the front, I don't know, it says you can record to CD, but I think it's just ambiguous in the uh, description, although having said that, I did look at a, a YouTube video by Westlife where he was recording in a music centre onto a CD, I don't think it does that actually. And um, this thing, it, it's got uh, the ability to record any of the inputs across to, certainly to the SD card or the USB. And, you know, the, the wood's made nice. The controls feel all right, it just doesn't work. <laughs> but that's not strictly speaking true. It does work. It plays records. It will play a record, and it sounds quite nice on a record. I, I've got, so I've got a choice. I can either upgrade it by putting in a decent cartridge, uh, Westlife did a thing using the Bepo, or Bo Bepo, yeah, or something cartridge, um, and he reckons that that works very well. With a, and put on a flip over stylus so you can play seventy eights. Because along with the actual thing, I got given a load of a load of seventy eights. Uh, I haven't looked at them yet, but I've got about one hundred fifty seventy eights. Got about one hundred fifty LPs, and I've got about. I think it's 300 or something like that CDs so it would be of use to get the thing working but on the other hand I don't want to spend any money on it if I don't you know, I can just I can just whack in a simple amplifier I've got a spare amplifier knocking around and just run it straight off the turntable you know so I could just use it as a player like that or I could just ignore it and just use it as it is now because it does play records so uh, yeah that's that's, uh, that's the video hoping that I might get some response because I don't know where to find any service information for this thing. I mean, I can take it apart. I can just fiddle with it and I might get it working. On the other hand, I'm, I've, if you haven't got the circuit diagrams and stuff, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to break it. And uh, give you an example. The turntable has a really weird... You have to turn it all... You have to leave, move the tone up. You have to turn it all the way to the left. And it goes click. And then you bring it forward and you put it on the record. Now... I know of turntables that do that in the past, but they've always been a gentle sort of thing, not moving it all the way across like this did. Anyway, um, that's that. That was my video for, for this week. It's taken ages to put it together, but I um, don't know why. Now, yeah, Stephen, I added bias tones to the test tape file and burned it all to an audio CD. So now I can. It can also be used in the boombox, and you can check if the audio tape tuning works Westlife had a TIAC unit yes no yes he did it was a very nice looking thing and he said it was pretty good um, but it's got the same components in it or possibly I don't know anyway that, that's what I was thinking but yeah I mean I'd, I'd find it useful to be able to play a CD uh, although I've got all the equipment around most, most of it's been put away to be honest because we've only got a small house and the idea of a CD player, um, I can play CDs in my computer, I can play DVDs in my computer, but only if I use an external drive. The idea of an all-in-one music centre is you know, it's quite appealing, really, to go through. I've got, I've got all these things to go through and sort out. So, uh, yeah, anyway, right. Um, talking about that, what did the Westlife's video do this week? I can't remember what his ones were this week. He's had two, I think. One was... Let's have a look. Just bring it up. Oh. Recordology is doing a strange thing this week. He's doing some sort of guess the whatever. And so... Um, he's still moving in. I think he's finding it difficult to put everything together right so oh yes he did the 
V Westlife did the really good one on a very cheap turntable, which was uh, a Gemini TT900, um, but it's playing 16 inch records with it and putting in decent cartridges and things, which is which was quite interesting. I, I found that one very interesting. Um, what did uh, Techmoan do this week? Techmoan this week did the Sanyo Stereocast. Well, that was, yeah, four days ago. Um, it's getting 269 views per hour on that, you know. And the one from the previous week is getting 97 views an hour. And, well, that's, that's what... Um, that's what having a good subscribership does for you. If anybody would like to subscribe to my channel who's watching the replay, then please do. And if they're watching the live, then please do. It all helps. Because the more subscribers you've got, the more YouTube puts out videos to different people. It tries people who aren't subscribed. Uh, but it works on the subscriber base to see if there's any point. Which is a bit of a shame. Because uh, things can change. Oh, now what have we got on there? Um, oh, I'm impressed with this thing working. Let me see. Um, Tech Moans one. I was a bit disappointed with. Well, actually, no, that's that's not right. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not a Tech Moan critic as such. Oh, hang on, Stephen says something. If the object is to play 78, 75s or 78s, yeah. I'd get the speed regulator out and build it into your own, into your hour or similar. Something with the AT thirty six hundred L cartridge. Yeah, um, could do that, but I've then got to plug that into somewhere, and that's that. Because what uh, what Westlife did? Um, did you see Westlife's one? He put on a a magnetic cartridge, a ceramic compatible magnetic cartridge onto that turntable and it played very nicely actually. It played at least as nice as Tecmo's one the previous week. Um, which is, you know, sort of possibly relevant. But at the end of the day we're, we're playing things from 60, 70, 80, well so more than 60 years ago. I'm more than 60 years old so therefore uh, it, you know what? You get to 65, 66. I'm 65 at the moment, 66 this year. And in your head, you're, you're not. <laughs> in your head, you're still the, well, I'd say in my head I'm about 35. There we go. Uh, oh, hello, Wasim. Nice to see you. Bit busy with boiler issue, but here for now. My Audio Technica player was playing records fast, and I had to adjust screw underneath to fix it. Use that phone RPM app that you showed before. Yeah, that's good, that one, isn't it? I, I found that to be very reliable. I checked that out against the mains frequency and found it to be absolutely good. So I'm glad you got that sorted. One of the things that you have to be careful with of when you go altering turntables is that you've made sure they've run, you've run them up to speed and up to temperature. But, um, yeah, that's good. All right, so we've got Stephen and we've got Wasim. There's... Uh, don't know if we're expecting Kelvin today, and I don't know if we're expecting Michelle, but we're only 20 minutes in, so I guess. Ah, YouTube came to the rescue. Explain yourself, sir. Or do you mean me? <laughs> I'm having another slurp. We've got, uh, we've got, oh, now that's interesting. There are five people watching at the moment, and but we've had ten views so far. Now I didn't know that, but I'm I'm pleased. That's good. Uh, uh, you were uh, trying to find the speed control on your motor, I would guess. Yeah, I the reason I would say that. Um, Stephen, you're right about using the AT3600L by and large. Gunther Prin. Oh, hello. Glad you could join us. 
What part of the world are you from, Gunther? Just so that I know. I'll probably forget within seconds, but you know, you can you can let us know. Um, yeah, the reason I was interested in playing the 78 is because I, I want to see hear what's on them because I've got this two boxes of them and uh, it'd be interesting to f see what's on them. And um, the other thing is that ah right, you're in the UK. That's good. It just helps with the time difference. I have a I regularly go on to um, Recordology's lives, and uh, obviously that's because I'm a late bird. I, I'm up until two or three in the morning every every night. Does that make sense? Every night in the morning? Yeah, you know what I mean. Past midnight it becomes morning, but I'm still night. And uh, I'm I'm normally up to. And he has people in from Germany, and he has well he has me in from the UK, and he has people from the other side of the world as well where it's actually early in the morning at the other side of the day it's, it's quite weird right anyway welcome Gunther so um anybody got anything they'd like to talk about specifically I'm I'm quite happy to talk about anything technical or not if I don't know the answer I'll tell you if I do know the answer I'll tell you and if I've got a way of finding out the answer I'll let you know that as well and uh, that, that's about the best I can offer there. Um, yeah, the thing is, I don't actually do this for hi-fi purposes, this listening to things nowadays. I very rarely get the time. Steve, I changed the belt on my deal for one from another cheap player. It's a bit tighter and that should be... And the platter is going a bit faster than it should be. But no more wow and flutter. Ah, right, okay. How? Why is it going faster? I guess it's because it's not slipping. Because, uh, yeah, with re records, you've got the problem that the, the amount of bass involved changes, and that will give you a drag, I suppose. My one, um, if you're going to use that app, I do recommend using a, getting a, a sort of a sellotape roll scotch tape or whatever you want to call it and just put it in the middle and then put the thing on the belts are strange things because you can get because um, with, with turntables you've got such a small drive spindle going on to such a big diameter on the platter that um, most problems are you know I mean, cogging or whatever isn't going to be a problem because you're talking about such a big ratio which is of course why they do it but uh, yeah. Um, so what was your problem in the end? See, it was just it was just a case of adjusting it. Be nice. I need to get a monitor with a camera in the middle of it, because then I could look at you and read it at the same time. Gunther, we're interested to hear on the news about the resurgence of the cassette all oh, right yes okay um well welcome to my channel i should do a little spiel oh, not very much um me as in i have been involved in cassettes since virtually the day they were born because i was a kid when they came out but i did actually was involved in um being one of the first owners of cassettes and things like that and uh, grew, grew up with them and then i ended up working on them and so most of my experience with cassettes is first hand and the reason I say that is because if you go watching a lot of the YouTube stuff and don't get me wrong I'm not having a go as such but um, the people a lot of the people on there there's, there's an American guy and he's only about 20 I mean how can he talk about something it came out in 1963, 64, with any authority, because he can only do the same as if I was to try and talk about gas lights and things from the Victorian age. I mean, I can only go by the history books on that. But I was there when cassettes came out. I was there repairing them when they were in normal service. And that's the way um, I've dealt with it. And the resurgence of cassettes, I think, is good because... I don't really understand why they ever died out. Um, 
all right we'll see just just a quick in dissection into a seam uh, speed was uh, 31 rpm on deck just a screw and it was almost bang on to 33 rpm records now sound okay good that's the way to do it even though it wasn't very far out but um yeah that's it's nice when you know isn't it it's nice to know my one i just checked mine the other day and it was running at 32.5 instead of 33 so yeah i'm not fiddling with that again all right okay yeah um the cassette resurgence i think is is a good thing one um hang on so it's moved also found a bass of chrome maxima 2 that i recorded back in the early 90s sounds wonderful so a very nice day also found uh an mtech chrome super yes well as you know if you look on my channel which is what i was going to say to gunther is um if you get, look on my channel you'll find that basically i'd spent a lot of time hmm, trolling around not trolling not being a troll but going around and um seeing all these stuff that people were saying about cassettes and stuff and there were certain people on certain youtube channels were you know 20 year olds talking about stuff that was i've got shirts older than him um and they were talking about stuff they were coming out with all this rubbish and one of the things that really got me now this one you might you might be aware of or might not be but have you seen on they stopped doing it now possibly because i'm around i don't know i, I, I blame the trumpet but maybe it's not but it was very common on the cassette things for people to be talking about bias because the first thing people talk about on cassettes is the bias and then they talk about the um they talk about azimuth so if anybody goes on they've got a problem the first thing they talk about is, is azimuth oh if it's muffled it's your azimuth and then they then they talk about and if not then then it's your bias you need to adjust your bias and you know it wasn't true yes we're seeing that's if cassettes i found to be great and um i found them to be really quite um quite forgiving which is not what you will hear if you go on to these these groups i was just talking about and one of the things that uh, got me was i was i was on the, the cassette blank cassette group which is the one that's sort of affiliated with uh, cassette comeback um and the people on there were particularly vehement about it oh you've got to give it some negative bias Give it some minus bias. No, there's an oxymoron. Give it more, less bias. Because that's what they're saying. Uh, because the because the bias controls on most decks have got a plus and a minus on them, and because they don't understand what bias is, they think if they turn it to the plus to the plus side, they're giving it plus bias, and then they think if they turn it to the to the other side, they're giving it more negative bias. Well, how can you give it more of something you're taking away? It's a volume control, and when it's in the zero, and when it's in the middle position, that's zero. So, and if you turn it that way, normally it's plus. So you're giving it more of the signal, like turning the volume up. And if you turn it that way, you take some of the some of the signal away. So it's less. so you don't give it more or less bias. You just give it less bias, and. Uh, it really pissed me off. Sorry, I shouldn't say that word, should I? It really annoyed me. And, it, and then I was reading all this other stuff people were coming up with about how things were were doing this, that and the other. And I thought, well, okay, they, they don't know. They're trying, most of them are, 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 are uh, trying to do their best. And then and then you got these people who are talking about you had to have all these alignment tapes and stuff. And, and I thought, well, this is just getting silly. If you want to check the speed on a cassette deck it's easy you play a tune and if it doesn't sound right then, then it's wrong so how can you tell if it sounds right well a simple way is just play another is play the tune next to it but you've got to be so careful if you go altering the speed control i mean i see him just saying he's altered the speed on his turntable which is fine no problem with that at all because you're adjusting it so that your records sound correct but imagine that you've got a cassette deck that you've been you've recorded i don't know 
20, 30, 50, 100, 200 cassettes on. And you then decide you're going to alter the speed of it. What's going to happen to all those cassettes? None of them are going to play right again because you've altered the machine, the machine that recorded them. Yeah. And this was the things that people were doing. And, and I, I thought, well, I can probably help people on this and just point them in the right direction. And there's a few other people who also were trying to stop these people going down this, this rabbit hole of self-destruction and, uh, and multiple expense. And, um, yeah, so that's how I started on it. Now, as far as the, um, the actual cassette resurgence is concerned, I think it's wonderful. Um, people are releasing stuff new on cassette. And if you've got yourself a machine... Now, this includes either the... Uh, the um, oh, what is it? The piles. P-Y. The pile cassette decks. Or the TX. They're, they're okay. I mean, the TX is very good. The piles are okay, but if you go for these cheap and cheerful boomboxes things, you, you, no, don't, don't 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 bother. You need to go vintage for those currently. But I also keep an open mind. Um, the um, the new French one, the um, I knew the name when I started, but you know the one I mean. That one is very good at playback, and it's important that we should give. We should support these people who are trying to give us cassette machines and things back because at the end of the day, if we don't support them, why would they bother? And if they don't bother, we've got nothing to to, to be able to support. It's a chicken and egg. It's an infinite circle. Anyway, right, okay. Let me see what we've got. Um, Stephen. Been looking into CD players and the history of DAX looking what MASH meant. Interestingly... There were issues with the early CD players, DAX, and linearity at low sound levels. Ah, it's interesting. I know there was a problem with this, with the, the um, there was a problem with hiss or the lack of it. People didn't like the silence, and so they they started mixing, and you'll find this on a lot of CDs. They they started mixing it in a bit of a bit of hiss so that people could tell that you know, it was eerily quiet wasn't eerily quiet anymore but what does mash mean because that's not a term i'm particularly uh au okay fait with I, I was aware that dax one of the problems i had with early dax was um they were very very expensive and so what they did was they they used to put the signal into the dax and so the high frequencies were out of phase which was a bit of a problem because high, high frequency phasing is is a problem that it cancels out very easily. And what they did was they, they basically multiplexed it. So they put in the left and they put in the right and they put in the left and they put in the right. And it wasn't long after that that they realised that they couldn't do this and they brought out cheaper decks, which was good. And they fed them with the signals which they separated and then fed separately as to digital streams so that was what that was one of the things but uh, if you tell me what mash means that would be interesting having another drink sorry there is a problem with there's a very interesting Tom Scott video and it says um, why is black blotchy on digital video and it talks about, which is possibly something to do with what you were referring to there, it talks about the fact that black is a, is a number near zero. And so they, they if on digital video, you have steps. I think it's 250. It depends on the date, the bit depth. But essentially, you've got steps between black and white. And... It's talking about the fact that all the steps are exactly the same size, but when you've got a value of zero and you put one, that's a large increase. And then you've got a, a value of one and you add one to it. Um, so you, you've now got two. And if you've got a signal next to it of one, a signal next to that of value zero, you've now got quite a big step between them 
relatively but when you've got a, a value of 200 and you add one to it one doesn't become much more so and that's why you get the banding in the blacks in digital video which is quite interesting and i'm guessing that uh, the linearity at low sound levels is, is what you're referring to there it's um it's one of those subjects that uh, it's quite interesting and you, you see how they go around it similar with the people getting confused about things on cassettes um or, and tapes about the the uh, time constant you know the eq for playback it's one of my little pet hates is the fact that people think that they can uh they can discern the difference between 70 microseconds and 120 microseconds well if you were in perfect conditions you could but if you're playing it back on a walkman using a cheap set of headphones you're not going to know the difference and it's not going to be enough because it's not the difference between 0 and 120 and 0 and 70 it's actually the difference between 70 and 120 is what you're listening for which is not a huge amount and as I said on somebody's um, on the Facebook page the other day a lot of people play back with Dolby on have been recorded with Dolby on playback Dolby off because they think it sounds wonderful well that's a lot more extreme than just playing with the wrong time constant which is only a tone control I don't know if you're aware of this but um, the way tone controls work in the simplest manner you've got a, you've got a resistor and you've got a capacitor and if you put a capacitor part o over onto a resistor so if that's if, if that hand is a resistor and that hand is a capacitor you put them like that you feel a signal in the bottom that signal at the top guess what you've got yourself a high frequency pass so it's going to have a higher frequency response than if you don't have the capacitor there. if you take the capacitor away now you've got a flat frequency response put the capacitor back on now you've got yourself a high pass filter and if you do you can do the other you can do it the other way around what they they don't often tell you is if this is a variable resistor and that's a capacitor instead of bypassing the, the resistor if you just take the capacitor and connect the bottom of it that's the thumb to earth all the high frequencies will go to earth and that gives you a base control you can actually bypass the capacitor by you know, it's simple nothing is when you're looking at electronics the actual switches i mean a computer is binary it's on and off the fact that you can fly a spaceship to mars by using just a, a series of switches shows how clever it is not um doesn't make it more complicated it's the programming and, and the implementation that's complicated the actual technology is relatively simple got a rocket got switches tell the tell the rockets when to fire by adjusting the switches programming the switches to do it is the fun bit and that's what they have to get right see keep it simple boil it down to essentials all right Stephen I've uh, been looking at it okay mesh Stephen that's why I added the 400 Hertz and the 12 kilohertz test tone at minus 15 dB so you can see if the bias level is correct um, and right okay so you're saying 400 Hertz to adjust the bias level yeah okay um, 12 kilohertz do you do realize that some tests well there's a problem with 12 kilohertz which is it's not the standard tone that you'd use for azimuth and um, the, the reason they, they go for 10 but some you know trying to record on some tapes at 12 kilohertz it isn't going to work you can't actually get 12 kilohertz onto some tapes at a decent level but um yeah i'm sure it, you'll find it of use um gunther i've just put new belts into a super scope cd330 and i've had it since the 80s and it sounds great three head portable pro recorder and also a panasonic sx10 portable from the late 90s all metal body oh yes they're nice those uh stephen i just like pre-recorded song 
then zoomed in on the wave for the Czech azimuth and was so close it's not worth bothering with right. alright okay, call me Czech azimuth alright uh, yeah that's, that's that's probably right Stephen what do you think azimuth actually is I'm not trying to I'm not, it's not a trick question I just want to I just want to know what you think it is and why it would be worth bothering with. And so, when you say you digitalized a pre-recorded song, and then zoomed in on the wave for the, to check the azimuth, how? What exactly were you trying to do there? Because um, sounds like a trick I haven't I haven't seen before, and I'm interested genuinely. All right. Okay. Um, I was going to talk about this thing that um, that Heckmoan did uh, while I'm waiting for the answer back from Stephen. And um, right, Techmoan did a thing on the the dongle, the stereocast dongle from Sanyo. And it was quite interesting. Um, the only thing that I thought was a little bit unfortunate was the fact that uh, there wasn't the understanding or maybe this is me I mean you know I can remember back in 1972 73 when 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 the BBC went to stereo transmissions I actually had my dad had a stereo system and with it came a well he, he bought he, they were so expensive. He bought a kit. I think it was a Heath kit, uh, FM synthesized stereo receiver, and it came in a box. And it, well, it didn't come in a box. It came with the box, and you had to you had to build it all together, align it, and everything, which was which was fine because he was into electronics. This is where I got it from, you see. And what I had to do, uh, what we did was, it, it plugged into this stereo amplifier that he built. And um, we had a decent turntable, which was the Garrard SP25 at the time, uh, with a probably a th whatever the equivalent of a 3600 pickup was in the day. And it was a nice sounding system. I and mean, he, he even built the speakers, which were supplied the drivers from RS. And uh, yeah, it sounded very nice. And people, now this is what people don't understand. This is why I say these things are sometimes. Know, children talking about stuff they don't understand. I was hmm, 73, I was 14, 15, and we actually, yeah, 73, I left school in 73, so 15, we actually had um, test transmitters being transmitted and Radio 2 went digital, uh, sorry, not digital, went stereo, and I actually got up early in the morning before I went to school in order to listen to the stereo radio because it was fantastic and it was something I'd never heard before and I bought my own set of headphones from Lasky's Lasky's was a shop at the time and it was absolutely magical the, the ability to hear all the different music I mean obviously I'd heard the stuff from my dad's record collection but to be able to listen to the early morning radio from Radio 2 and hear it all in stereo was, was amazing. And being a bit of a geek, I, I got up at 6 o'clock in the morning, listened to an hour, an hour and a half of stereo music, then um, went to school, and that was that was it. Now, we also did back then, the BBC did a, a, a four-channel broadcast, surround sound, quadraphonic sound, and... Um, we had, now this is where it got interesting, my my mum and dad bought me a Fidelity radio, it was only a, a sort of a, you know, had a handle on top, FM radio, and because we knew about these things, we knew how the stereo worked, We, my dad bought me, we, we got a stereo decoder chip, um, Motorola one it was, can't remember the exact number, we got a stereo decoder chip and board, and uh, it was a, phase lock loop stereo decoder you put a signal in and you got stereo out 
So my dad took the radio to work. There's a friend he had because he worked in uh, he was in computers, but his friend was a uh, sort of was um, previously in audiovisual stuff, and his fr my, his friend took out the decoupling capacitors uh, that took, that were there to take out the 19 kilohertz pilot tone, and so he then fed that out on a separate lead to the excuse me, well, let me just find find something hang on ow just caught my foot in something hmm yeah sorry uh yeah anyway it's, it sent out the signal uh through a separate socket on the back of the radio which was the full bandwidth signal from the fm de uh, multiplex demultiplexer and that we then fed into the input of this which i had in a small like a pill box it was about that big hand there that big and the, so we fed into there and then initially we fed that out to a set of crystal headphones if you've ever known what they are which which was good but then got a proper amplifier now that could feed a proper amplifier and it was good the proper amplifier then uh, had stereo sound now we used that over the years for many years and fed that in, used it to feed in my in my first car. Um, I modified an, a, a radio so that we could we could actually put it in and feed it into the into the input of the radio. We, before they had things like aux in, aux in, as the Americans call it, we had we had to wire these things in ourselves. So I had to wire in a an FM aerial onto it onto the um onto the actual portable radio so we could plug it into the car aerial so we had a little we had a, a car adapter and that went then went into a normal in the uk 75 mil uh, 75 ohm jack like, like a tv aerial so we had that on the side of the radio and then we had the on the back of the radio we had this lead that came out which was on a jack which went into this little box which we made and that was a proper FM demodulator. And the reason for that was simple. Um, until 73, stereo wasn't particularly popular in the UK, unless you were a hi-fi geek. And uh, people didn't know what it was. And it was very expensive. Very, very expensive. Tagmo pointed out that the cost was about 50% of the cost of the radio. But the trouble is, the radios were so expensive in the first place. And... Um, so 50% more, you're looking at, uh, if it was a £200 radio, you're talking about it being £300, aren't you? I didn't, get the exact, I didn't do the calculation on that, but it's quite important that um, people understand this. So anyway, that's how the FM, and that's why it was so good that you could buy this dongle, because if you didn't want to have FM stereo, the radios were relatively cheap. And if you wanted to have FM stereo, then they had this thing you could plug in and use. Good idea. I did think it, he was right about the fact that it wasn't very useful on the actual music sender he had because he didn't have any way of plugging it back in again to having taken the sound out he didn't have a way of putting it back in it was only for headphones but I guess um, as most people weren't that fussed about stereo it wasn't that big a problem really if you were fussed you plugged your headphones in and if you weren't fussed you listened to it on the speakers anyway that was, that was just a thought on there um, right this is that's we used. Oh, here we go. Right. The the resistors in the DACs that were used to create the analog signal weren't precise enough. Ah, oh, yes. So the errors could easily swamp the least significant bits. One bit DAC sold that. Yes, I see what you mean now. Yes, they had to get very precision. That's why they were so expensive, of course. And uh, that's why they used to just use one, and then they went over to using two. Yeah. That makes sense. And did you find anything about when when you look? You you probably find some stories about the putting the hiss on, but that's I think that might only be a consumer thing. Like I say, people like the sound of records. Right. Anything else we can talk about? It's um, quarter nine, and uh, it's it's a nice day. But it's still oh, it's quite dark outside. You see, I don't see it from in here because I'm facing away from the window, which is probably best. 
that's why I've, you've got this really not particularly attractive green curtain behind me because um, I've got a proper green screen with one behind that but uh, the, the heavy green is a little bit a little bit iffy I'm not overly impressed with it um, yeah because actually if you want to, you can make a, a a simple deck just by doing a, a resistor ladder that was something we did in college the the uh, technology again is, is is relatively simple but a lot of these things it works on re on diminished returns you know um, uh, where you pay out to get it any better you pay out an awful lot more um, is a Rolls Royce engine that much better than a mini engine well no it's not that much better it's bigger it's more powerful but it's not infinitely better and you know then you start working it how do you how do you compare things here's a here's a thought process for you when i worked in the broadcast industry we had things called broadcast monitors and they cost about a thousand pounds each this was black and white and we also had uh, there were televisions of the same size screen size which were um 50 quid so what was the difference between a thousand pound monitor and a 50 pound tv because if you think about it the tv had the ability to receive television signals whereas the monitor was literally a rugged tin box <laughs> i'm not going to record on tapes that can't do 12 kilohertz or i won't care right okay that's a statement <laughs> right yeah the, the, so you had these rugged tin boxes which were um they had 90 degree tubes in them instead of 110 degree tubes and they had um, a few other circuitries and things around them and what they did do what tvs didn't do is they had very stable e, uh, eht the um, tube supplies were very stable which and they didn't on, on the good ones they didn't used to generate the the ht from the um, line scan which meant that if you if you ever looked at the old tv color or black and white but mostly black and white when they when the screen went bright the picture went narrow it's a long time ago now but the picture used to shrink and then when when it went dark it used to get bigger i think that was the way around it was it was one way or the other and the reason for that was because the the current being drawn was changing and so that altered the amount of sweep on the on the scans because the scanning and the high voltage was, were connected together so on a, and on the oscilloscope what they had was they had a high voltage generator and they had a scan generator and the two were never going to be connected but on a on a broadcast monitor you had a similar you had a similar system whereby you had a generator which was separate from the scan which meant that you didn't end up with the pictures shrinking and growing and what they actually did the way they got around it on the domestic sets do you remember i've got this um i will show you something just to try and make it a little bit more interesting than just me talking all the time um see if i can find it file explorer here we go open that open that have you ever seen well you've seen one on here but have you ever seen the test card f i see if i can open that up on something that you can see it on and i'll explain something to you see that's what we're talking about there we go nice big test card f if I can shove that over to there, which I can. Right, let me just do the old uh, cut and fade and things. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you can actually relax. Turn that off. And cut that across. Boom. Right. This particular test card I've obviously made up because it says GKIS. Gary, keep it simple. Colour. And it's got the picture of the lovely little lady there who is similar age to me, I think. 
and on this test card which is a variation of the test card F so I didn't alter it much but you see these castellations here so you can see the hand going around here these castellations and those spot no, no, that there that arrow and that is an arrow and that is an arrow and that is an arrow now the idea is as you can see on there it's uh, that's better when you're altering a color tv a 431 which is what that's originally made for um those arrows you would adjust if you look at the way this picture is actually being framed on here you would adjust it not like that because that, that means you've got too much overscan you would adjust it so that the arrows were just overhanging the um the image the, the tube so if i try and do that i can pull that down see that arrow there that would be adjusted so that you could just see the cast lasers of that and that would give you then the ability to have it have the, the picture expand and contract without losing too much of the picture but if you've ever seen a crt tv and you guys are all young so you probably can't remember it um that was a common problem boom that was a common problem that they just didn't like having the, the voltages you know the brightness changing and so that's what you did now that's the sort of thing information that you get from somebody like me um or any old any old fart who used to repair tvs but you wouldn't get from somebody who was just looking at it and see they would look at a tv like that and they'd say oh that's awful but they wouldn't understand why um now let me see we go back to what steve was saying um uh, he said i was looking at the high frequencies and see if they aligned left and right channel or were out of phase as they would be if the azimuth on my deck was different from the recording deck yeah that wouldn't work because you were using a pre-recorded tape um it would work you're right but there's a far easier way of doing that um the normal method is to put the right so look at the high frequency if they were aligned left and right channel or were out of phase as they would be in if the azimuth on my deck was different from the recording deck well yeah it, that's that's fine i mean you're doing it right but um the easy the far easier way of doing that is to literally you put the, the left and right in and then you you produce a mono signal and if the if the signal is correct it shouldn't lose anything and if it's if it's out of phase it will it will produce a drop which is why you know i was saying about the um the funny effects on the tapes that we've been testing that some of sometimes you get that sort of you get the, instead of it coming down smoothly you get that sort of dip in it well that dip is only on most of them it's only on the 20 minus 20 um db section although a couple of them's got it on the zero so that's why i was saying what is that all about now if you think about it the only way you could get that effect because i then went onto the monos let me pull that up uh, if i can find it um now where was it let me just bring this up because this is an interest well maybe interesting to some people um if i go on to finding i'll bring it up i'll cut across you can follow the follow the going uh, it's that one turn off and uh, fade boom all right okay so back onto my desktop if i open that and we find videos videos finished no video and photos for use and then we go into uh, what was the last one fox no capture um uh, capture let's do it alphabetical let's 
CA pin, yeah. Should be there. Don't know, where's it gone? Uh, wow. Well, isn't it amazing? I've got a really good system of doing this and I've obviously done it differently because I wasn't consistent. But um, it should be there. CAP, CAP. But, oh, have I got it under a different thing? Demo tape here, single machine, digital mixer, not digitalizer. Fixed bias, G tide. Attach your boom box. Ah. What have we got in here? D, 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 D. RTM Fox. Tudor. RTM Fox. Right. Looking at this one, I just want to show you here. Um, this tape has a very slight Wait, you recognise that? Right, okay. That didn't do what I wanted it to do, did it? Um, don't know what it's done, to be honest. Bo -bo 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 -bo. There it is. Right, okay. This is the 0dB sweep on the RTM Fox. And you can see there is a very slight, very slight, well, it's, it's not a slope. It's, it's fairly normal. Now, if I go on to the um on to the other bit here if I go on to where it's meant to be um video process G tide um D D D D right on here somewhere. Uh, this is where it will get silly. It will get silly. Anyway, what I was going to say was, you can see there's a very small amount. Let's bring up the. Um, uh, see, I've got so much stuff on there. It's what 400 videos does for you. I think it's 400. Something silly like that. Let's go into there. RTM Fox. Okay, right. So there's all the RTM Fox stuff, and if I bring it along, so there's your minus 20, nice and whatever. There's your minus 23 kilohertz, nice and smooth. There's your one kilohertz, and so there's your distortion coming in. This is why I'm quite um, with the distortion. People don't seem to realize that just because it's loud doesn't mean it's good. And there's your silence which on this one's 73 dB, which is because it's a type 1, which is fine. Now, minus 20 dB pink noise, it looks pretty good. And then we go on to the 0 dB pink noise, it looks pretty good. So there's no real obvious problems there. And then we've got on the white noise, it's like that. And then we go on the white noise, it's like that. So there is, a, there is something happening there on the sweep. But... Um, certain amount of that is harmonic distortion and things because on the lower level you haven't got that so that cog in there I think is certain amount of the um, you see these bits here are, are getting bled together they shouldn't be like that and on this one I haven't got the separate traces but let's have a look at this Tudor tape the Tudor tape actually didn't do too bad as far as that sort of effect was concerned look boom 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 so the effects at zero db and the effects at uh, the minus 20 negligible but when we were talking about the last tape which i did which was the tdk where's that uh, tdk Um, Thompson TDK ish. No. 
can't find it. Can't find it because I'm looking for it. Dee 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 dee. Do the tape, try, uh, tuck tight. DK shootout. Not there. Anyway, uh, I should have really prepared, I guess. I don't know. It's one of those things. You can't find anything when you're looking for it. The that's um. You can see how much is involved in all this. Now, why can't I find? Should be. It was um, the TDK Type Two, whatever it was, that I've just done, which had the rather nasty, rather nasty uh, effects, and it's not apparent on all of them. Anyway, sorry, I've got myself lost, and I'm taking too much time doing it. So um, we'll turn that off, and we bring it back to. Let's go back to me. Boom. Boom. There we go. Right, let's get rid of that thing on there. Uh, look at the high frequencies, see if they align left and right channels, it'd be different from deck. Right. Yes, you're right. It would do. But I wouldn't bother looking. I'd just go for uh, actually seeing um hearing. If you switch it to mono and it will the the phase errors will cause it to cancel out. If they're in phase, it won't alter the volume effect. If anything, it'll be slightly, slightly louder. But the problem with looking at stereo tracks the way you're doing there is um, with the, with the music is that they will actually have out of phase signals. So it's it's all it's all sort of a bit of a bit really your best bet is to use an alignment tape which is what all the experts will tell you but um i don't think you need to all you need to do is you need to hear and listen and go for maximum level if you look on one of my videos i've got a thing where i'm actually doing that and adjusting it using the ion and the you actually get a summed pattern on the um, on the app I was using and you just adjust it for maximum output level uh, if it sounds right there's a good there's a good um, theory with with mu with music and audio it doesn't matter whether it is right it's whether it sounds right that's important because at the end of the day you've got to listen to it so you know much better to, to do it that way um, what I was going to say about this thing about when we're talking about monitors, we're talking about the differences between a 50 pound tele and a thousand pound monitor. Basically, the picture was exactly the same, except for if it went bright and dark. Now, so which is better, the 50 pound one or the thousand pound one? It's uh, it's interesting. And when we're talking about color monitors, we, they used um, they used to use Sony Sony 13 inch TVs for monitors in a lot of studios in the original days of colour TV because it was not a PAL monitor it was a NTSC modified monitor I'm, I'm sort of people could shoot me down on that but basically they de it they took away the PAL they took away the phased alternate line bit and produced what was effectively an NTSC signal at PAL at um, 65 lines and they had a tint control on it what that meant was, when they pointed that camera that was feeding that signal into there, if the camera was out of alignment, the monitor showed because the color, the color cast was wrong. When it was in correct alignment, it, the color cast was right. Well, is that a good monitor? Yes, but if you were watching that TV at home and it, and uh, it was quite annoying because if um, if airplanes went over then you get phasing and you the color would flash and it would change color because it wasn't pal because what happens with pal is you'd lose the color but with um, this ntsc uh, hence the nickname never twice the same color ntsc yeah never the same color twice whatever um it was it was really annoying because it would change phase which meant it'd go green or red or blue uh, as it was flying over but 
if you wanted to check a camera, it was brilliant because you just plugged a camera in, you didn't have to alter anything. You could see the colour was right or wrong. Uh, yeah, so is a good monitor or a good way of monitoring something the same as a good picture? I mean, if you've got a TV that produces a really wonderful picture from a really not too good camera, is that a good monitor or a bad monitor? Well, if you want to watch it, it's a good but if, it, if you want to see if there's anything wrong with what you're feeding it, it's bad. So all of these things have different different connotations depending on how you use them. And that's one of the things I was going to say about, uh, if we're talking back about the um, cassettes and things, if you've got a, if you've got a turntable that's, got a, that's a bit bright, is that good or bad? If you've got a record deck that's a bit bright, is that good or bad? If you've... How many people, you get, a re you get a record player or a radio or something, and it's got a tone control on it, it's all, it's, you know, bass and treble controls. If you were to walk into most people's houses and look at their, their audio system and look at the, the bass and treble controls, you'll find they've all turned them up. They've turned the bass up about a quarter at least, and they've turned the treble up a bit because they want to hear it go, tsh, tsh, tsh. and well, I don't blame them. But is that correct? No flat is what it should be but why would you listen to flat because flat means you don't get the rumbling bass and means you don't get the tsh -tsh -tsh. so everybody always turns the bass and treble up and you know, it's just the way it's the way of life and there's an interesting thing about the bbc doing some sort of experimentation on speakers and how people perceive sound anyway um that's that's that so yeah interesting so any more comments on there um oh i'm looking at my my monitor and it's seeing i'm seeing all sorts of things happening on there i've just i've just started up believe it or not i've just started up the photo software but that's another story right okay let me go on to the live on here which is better that's all happened on there um so high frequency it's still the same same chat on there right let's see what the notifications say Herodology upload is another thing um he's looking for a record that was it he's looking for a specific record he's doing it as sort of like a uh, treasure hunt which was an interesting idea i don't know how that's going to work but i suppose i'll have to watch the videos and find out um yeah okay well unless anybody's got anything else to say then maybe it's about time to wind it up uh, it's interesting on there still still on the still on the how to, how to do it thing right okay any questions from anybody um we've had 33 views which is interesting and the average views are quite good the current views and all the rest of it. it's nice having the chart the charts there um if you want to chat about this in independently Stephen I will do no problem um, and if anybody else Gunther or or Wasim or anybody else who's on the who watches the replay the car crash replay uh, you know more than happy to to swap information and again if I don't know the answer I'll find out for you and if I can find out the answer I'll you know I'll let you know and if I, if, I, if I really can't find out the answer, I'll also let you know that as well. Okay, right. So, unless anybody's got anything else to say, I will wind it up now. We've been on for oh, an hour and ten minutes. So, yeah, right. With that, I will say good, good night then, people. That's now it's been night. Don't have an hour on the end of night. Good night and thanks for coming. That's not yet spelled coming either, but there we go. Um, that's better. Just one M. Just one M. Please um, get your friends to. Uh, subscribe.
S E R I B E. Is that how you spell it? Yes. No, no red lines. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's the end of the car crash for this week. And um, yeah, there's been nothing else going on. Hang on. What's that? Yeah. Right. So um, thank you very much. It's been nice chatting to you. Try and try and find something to talk about for next week, and um, we'll go from there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, does that mean that they haven't got out? So, the car crash also happens at the end, and uh, that's that's fine. So, right, I shall say goodbye. I shall hit the buttons, and see you next week. Cheerio. Bye bye. Stop streaming. <laughs>